So life settlement is broadly as a transaction in a life insurance policy, right? And uh, we at River Rock, we, we run uh, closed end strategies. So private equity like forms where we aggregate life, uh, life settlements, life insurance policies. Um, and the main difference between a life settlement and a viatical settlement is that generally speaking, a viatical settlement, which is the term that most viewers are probably familiar with um, because it was born out of the AIDS pandemic, is a viatical settlement consists of somebody transacting in a policy where there's a terminal illness as opposed to uh, a life settlement is transacting in a policy where there isn't a terminal illness. Maybe it's just an age-based thing. So I'd say that in our asset class is the primary difference. Um, we at River Rock are considered the small face purchaser of uh, life settlements or life insurance policies. Um, to us, that means two and a half million dollars and below. Uh, the reason that we focus on that trend is due to certain socioeconomic and macroeconomic trends where we believe we know that um, we have an, an economic tailwind or an advantage to um, deploying capital in that space. So life settlements, broadly speaking, is not um, correlated to the capital markets, right? Um, depending on the uh, their source, um, there's two good academic sources out there. We have somewhere between a negative 0.12 to a 0 0.06 correlation mm -hmm. to capital markets. Um, so our diversification is a little bit different. We like to diversify our por portfolio based on impairments. So risks and um, diseases that the individual has. We also like to div diversify a portfolio across insurance carrier. We don't want exposure to just one uh, impairment or one insurance carrier. In an impairment case, if you know they were to cure that impairment, that's not a good risk to be in. Um, from an insurance carrier perspective, we don't want to be invested in a single insurance carrier and then have that capital account come under duress.